Hey, what's going on, internet? It's 1.37 in the morning on a Wednesday, and I'm ecstatic to be producing a DaVinci Resolve tutorial. A few months ago, I bought a Blackmagic Cinema camera, and I've been afraid of this program. But since I've been shooting, been working on my short film called The Millennials, I've really been left with no option other than to dive into DaVinci Resolve and color correct the film inside of this program. I've seen quite a few tutorials out there on how to use this program and how to color correct and how to round trip your footage. But all of them don't seem to be holding all the key information just to get a good color grade. In this tutorial, that's what I hope to achieve. Here we are in the media window of DaVinci Resolve. Up here, there's the library. Go ahead and navigate to your footage and go ahead and drag your footage into the media pool. If you're prompted with um, this frame rate and project settings, I would suggest always clicking change. So click change. This clip will actually be in the description so you can follow along with this tutorial. All right, so now since it's in the media pool, we're gonna click edit. And we're gonna go up to timeline, click the plus symbol, and you can rename your timeline. If you uncheck empty timeline, it'll automatically import your clip onto the timeline. So create new timeline and the clip's already there. Since this is the only clip that we're color correcting, so I'm gonna click color. Let's go down to the camera button right here. And I'm gonna go ahead, since this is raw, I'm gonna go ahead and decode using, click clip, and then go down to color space where it says rec 709, click B and D film. And that's gonna make your clip raw. It's gonna make it desaturated. It's gonna give us a lot of different levels to play with. Once that is done, uh, I don't necessarily like to start diving into color correction. I actually don't like color correcting on my first node. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new serial node. So you go up to nodes, add a serial node and keep note of the keyboard shortcut because I will continue to use that. So it's option S on a Mac. Now we have our second node, it's selected and we're ready to begin color correcting. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the color wheel right above the camera raw in the camera. And here we are with our color wheels. What I also wanna do is I wanna go up to view, video scopes on. And this will bring up our four video scopes. I'm just going to go straight to one up and that will give us our parade. And basically, let me just give you a quick breakdown of how this is supposed to work. Um, your colors are supposed to reach the top of this line. The highlights or the gain is supposed to reach the top of this line. And your lift or shadows is supposed to touch the bottom of this line. As you can see, the color information is really nowhere near the gain level. But DaVinci Resolve is so powerful that it'll do it for you. So with this node selected, go up to Color, Auto, Color. And what that did is it just leveled out your scopes for you. As you can see, the red is top, touching the top of this line and the shadows are nearly touching the bottom of the parade right here. That's just one example of how DaVinci Resolve is so powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new serial node. New nodes created. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start messing with the color wheels to get the look I want. I'm kind of going for a, a very clean sort of comedy sort of look because this film is a drama slash comedy. I don't, I'm not looking for any contrast. I'm not looking for anything dramatic. I'm not looking for a cold feeling or a warm feeling. I'm just looking for something very professional. And DaVinci Resolve can easily allow me to do that. I'm going to move the lift up just a tad, go to gamma, move it up to be warm a bit, and the gain to. And I'm going to move the offset down to the blues. Okay, so right now it's still a pretty flat image. It's halfway professional, but we there's still a lot that we can do. All right, so since I have a couple of nodes up here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the labels on this. I'm going to call the second node levels, the third node uh, color wheel. Okay, so it's time for our next node. 
And in this node, I like to just add saturation. So add our next node. I'm going to go down here to saturation, and I'm going to go ahead and just lift that up a bit. Okay, that should be all right. And you can also add contrast, but I'm not a contrasty person. I'm not looking for that type of look. So let's move on to the next part. I'm going to go ahead and just call this um, SAR. <laughs> SAR. <laughs> Can't type. All right, I'm going to create a new node. And now we're going to mess with the curves. So make sure you go down to this little bracket right here next to custom and make sure gang custom curves is unchecked or all your curves will move together. So I'm going to go ahead and just start messing with the levels a little bit. Bring the luminous up just a tad. I'm going to bring the reds just up a bit. And just to let you guys know, um, this part, the top portion of your curves is the highlights that controls the highlights of your image and the bottom part controls the shadows. So on the reds, I brought the highlights and the shadows up a bit. I'm not going to touch the greens. I'm going to just bring the blue up just a touch. Kind of even out that red a bit because the blue was all the way crushed behind below the middle line. Okay, so this is looking pretty good right now. There's still a little bit more that we can do. DaVinci Resolve offers some very powerful tools to be able to isolate certain colors and be able to bring the richness out of certain details. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and rename this um, Curves. I'm going to create a new serial node. So now we're going to get into... Uh, power mask and also HSL. So I'm going to click, let's start with the mask and let's go ahead and turn on our circle uh, mask. Her face is kind of watched out because of the lighting that we have on set. So I'm going to go ahead and just place this on her face and just drag the handles in a bit. Here, let me actually wait to a sh frame where her face is and let DaVinci Resolve do the rest. Okay. All right, I'm just going to drag this up to match her face. What we're going to do is just to make her face have more color, we're just going to add saturation to the image. Okay, that should be all right. Now, I don't want her hair to be color corrected. I just want her face to be a little bit more tan. So I'm going to go down to the qualifier or the HSL hue, saturation, and lightness. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the selection range is selected. And I'm going to click her face. And then I'm going to go up to this highlight wand. It's going to show us what's selected. If we can select a little bit more of her face, so I'm going to go to color range and make sure the, the color, picker, color picker of the plus tool is selected. And just click around. And that's... Yeah. That's probably the best way we can get right now. So that I'll go with that. But some of our hair up here is selected, so we can easily take that away. Click a new power mask window. I want to click the square one. Or the rectangle one, excuse me. Okay, now that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and just drag it out. Drag these secondary handles out so it'll sort of fade out and be soft so there won't be any harshness, but this window isn't doing anything yet. We have to invert the mask. So I'm going to go to mask and click this inverted window and you see the she lost the color in her hair. So this is exactly what we want. But before we go ahead and start tracking, I also want to isolate her lips because it's starting to look a little bit desaturated. We're going to make a new serial node. We're going to make a new mask. We're going to use the sphere again. I'm going to drag this down. We're going to make it an oval. Make it a bit smaller. And we're going to put it on her lips. Okay, so all we have to do is make it a bit more red. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag the gamma wheel up a bit. That looks all right. Cool. So now all we have to do now is track our mask. So I'll go back to our serial node 6. And I'm going to click this little target icon right here. Or the tracker. What's great about DaVinci Resolve is that you don't actually have to put the mask on any sort of points. All you have to do is analyze the clip, 
forward and backward, and you're done. So since we decided to color correct from this point, I'm going to have to track forward and backward. So I'm going to start backward, and I have the oval mask selected, so it's only going to track that mask first. So I'm going to go back, and I'll be uh, back shortly. <laughs> All right, the clip is done analyzing backward, and what's great is that it also rotated our mask. So that's great. <laughs> so let's go back to where the uh, track begins and it's analyzed forward. Okay, now that's done. I'm going to go back to where we started analyzing. All right, now I'm going to analyze the second mask, which was our uh, rectangle or square, whatever shape that is. So I have it selected to go back to track, analyze backward, and I'm also going to analyze forward. So make sure you do that. Our second mask is done tracking, so then all we have to do now is just track the lips. And we'll go ahead and do that. All right, and just analyze forward. Now that is done, I'd just like to take the moment and tell Starbucks that if you would have sponsored this show, I would have separately color corrected this bottle. But since you didn't, well, what a missed opportunity. Okay, moving on. We're basically done. This is a pretty good look. This is kind of what I was looking for. I'm just going to go ahead and rename these nodes and then I'm going to show you how to save this preset and apply it to other clips. Okay, so you want to go to your image, right click it and click grab still, but make sure your power grade window is up. We don't need that anymore. Your power grade window is up. You right click, grab still. And it added it to your power grade. So you can go ahead and you can Rename it. And then all you have to do is on your new clip that you have up, you right click your color, your power grade, and you can either click add correction or pen to no graph. And just keep in mind that the mask that we made, you have to retract those into the new clip. But that's really it. It's very simple. You can easily get your new clip started. Also, another thing, you probably want to go to the levels again on your new clip and do a redo the auto color so your um, levels will be matched you can hand do that but you know you're not you're not getting paid enough so <laughs> that's great uh, i'm just going to quickly show you how you can export your clip so you want to go to deliver um, single clip would work choose your codec time pro res 422 hq is usually what i do it in in 2400 by 1330 1350 excuse me 23.976 frames per second, render audio, choose your output, click force sizing to highest quality, and force the Bayer res to highest quality, so you can make sure you get the best quality possible. And then when you're done with that, click add job to render queue, and start render. And then you're done. Let's get a quick look at our before and after. This is our color corrected image, and this is our before image. As you can see, DaVinci Resolve gives you the tools that you need to get whatever look you're looking for. And in this case, I was just looking for a clean, professional look that will help sell the comedy of my film. Once again, this shot was from our short film called The Millennials. We should have a trailer out very soon, and I'm looking forward for you guys to see that. There will definitely be a lot more tutorials coming along the way with color grading on how to get different looks, how to round trip your footage to premiere, Final Cut Pro, and then back to DaVinci for your final color grade. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. I'm Joshua Noel, and join me next time where I'll show you how to feed a dinosaur.